Hey everyone, hope you're having a good day. My name's Andy, my channel's Finding Value. And today we're gonna to do our daily technical analysis updated commodities, work our way through the dollar, yields, precious metals, and commodities ETFs that I follow. I'll interject my financial opinions as we go. And if you need help with anything, check out finding-value.com, where I dive deeper into these sectors, individual companies, share more freely my thoughts and opinions uh, on the market, backing it up uh, with some of the data, and how I'm playing this bull market. Uh, you can also see my portfolio. You can also see uh, the trades that I'm doing. So uh, we do have a coupon code Mayday that's still active. Um, I'm gonna change it to uh, a July coupon code here shortly. So M-A-Y-D-A-Y is still active at this time. So let's dive in here and let's take a look and see what is going on with the market, starting with the DXY. Uh, DXY here, uh, ready to, Basically broken to the upside here, a little bit of short-term pressure, uh, downside pressure. It resisted that downside pressure today, uh, came back up throughout the day. So we, we gapped lower and then came back up throughout that day. So the momentum is to the upside with that big wick at the bottom. Still looks good uh, if it wants to try to work its way on up. To the upside and I'm looking at the big green candlestick and the small selling pressure move uh, that generally works its way on up. Uh, yields are generally what drive the DXY because DXY is more or less just the relative strength against currencies. So you can have a currency that drops like this and another one that drops like that and this currency is stronger. The difference is what is measured for this move up. <laughs> So they're both going down, but we're measuring the relative movements between it. And generally that is driven by monetary tightness or weakness uh, of the underlying currency. Two year yield, uh, it is up today about 0.17. It's just been trading sideways here, uh, held in a tight little range there, moving sideways. We're still in this bigger pattern and we don't know if we're gonna break lower or break higher in this um, yield. 10 year yield rip into the upside, big move. There it is today. Uh, we are still in that pattern as well. There we are. And to me, this looks bullish to break to the upside <clears throat> with the current trading that we've seen through here. That's a lot of green army showing up and not a lot of selling, I should say not a lot of lower yield pressure. 30 years got the same type of setup and we're getting closer we're inching closer to this breakout here what's driving all that um, usually the longer end of the curve goes up with higher inflation expectations uh, if it goes up faster than the two-year which it is we call that a bear steepener where we see the longer end of the curve go up more than the shorter end and inflation expectations are increasing. TYX TNX ratio, uh, no movement today, just moving sideways, still looks good for an uninversion of the yield curve. The problem is, or maybe not the problem, but we're doing this with the curve going up. So the curve is going up, and the longer end is going up faster than the shorter end. TLT. Bond prices getting smoked to the downside, down 2%. I know we were playing with this in a potential breakout, but that did not occur. We had a nice reversal, um, pretty strong selling pressure there, and we could break the trend line going up here to the downside. If we break it to the downside, that means higher yields, lower bond prices. Two and 10, we're getting an uninversion of the curve. But again, it's with the curve going up. It's a bear steepener. It's uh, the longer end of the curve going up more than the shorter end. It's not like the crashes where the whole curve falls and the two-year is tanking. Um, this is something different. <laughs> We've got the gold price. This looks good still. We are in a falling wedge. And this looks good to try to work its way on up if it wants to try to break here. Uh, so that's still well positioned in a falling wedge. Silver also looking okay in a 
we'll call it a flag pattern here. And we're getting closer to that resistance line just above us. We also have platinum down 2.2%. We haven't broken out of that resistance trend line yet. Still underneath it. And then palladium is still underneath that resistance trend line that we're trying to break here in the short term. GDX is just trading sideways, still looks good to try to work its way on up if gold does break to the upside. Has a lot of support underneath it, all these trend lines. GDXJ is underneath resistance, but again, we're not getting tons of selling pressure here, so maybe it can put together a, a move higher uh, if gold decides to move on up. And SILJ also just down inside of that climbing channel, sitting on top of pattern. <clears throat> XAE to gold ratio down 1%, but still above the big breakout line. Everything still looks good. And nothing to worry about yet. We've got crude oil ripping 2.35% today. I put this here. Um, I was using it on the daily, on the weekly candlesticks, trying to get a good... A good point where you're finishing on the closing prices instead of these pass-through wicks. I also did that here <clears throat> on the closing prices. And this is a break if you use the closing prices, uh, which I usually use. We'll see if we get momentum generated here. And this might be driving, what, uh, driving yields higher if this does break to the upside. I'd really like to see... A break of like 87 here, somewhere in that range there. That would be a nice one to break there. Um, but again, we'll, we'll monitor it here, and we'll see if we get that break. TTF gas down 3%, but still within the channel. Uh, natural gas in America selling off a little bit more steeply, and it looks like we could head lower in net gas in the short term. Uh, with that momentum that's being generated the past few trading sessions. Our boy XOP, yeah, you know me, surprised it didn't go up more. It went up 0.27% on a 2% up day for, for crude oil. It still looks good, like it, it's positioned for a potential move higher. Um, that's what it looks like with that big green candle and the small selling pressure. So it still looks good. Just surprised it's not moving yet. Maybe it is waiting for confirmation of oil to, to really get into an uptrend before money flows start coming over to XOP. Maybe they're worried about a recession, whatever the reasons are. Uh, there's the neckline, and we're basically back on that neckline. OIH selling off 1.4% on an up day of crude oil. What's going on there? Uh, trend line or support level now, uh, right on support, and we'll see if that support holds. Uh, that is a bearish engulfing pattern, but again, we'll see. Uh, it's kind of interesting to see all the selling pressure through here and the small green candlesticks. That isn't generally a great sign for a move higher. Uh, we could see further downside. Maybe the market is slowing down. The weird part is oil looks pretty strong today. So we'll see if oil's got enough juice in it to keep going. Uh, and if these start to turn around eventually. Newcastle Coal Futures, uh, I got up 0.26%. Still looks good. We could trade sideways for a little bit. But um, eventually, I think we'll work our way on up. And this is a breakout retest. And I like the retest areas. Sprout to Uranium Trust, down 4%. Looking pretty weak still. Tried to turn, getting some selling pressure here. Lots of selling pressure across the board here. We could see lower prices in the short term. This is, I don't think that's updated yet, but this is the uranium price still in this falling wedge. Doesn't look that bad. We've got URA up a little bit, 0.66%. It's right on support. We've got URNN up a little bit, and that is also where there is some support. Um, I wouldn't say this looks strong though. We do have a bearish engulfing here right before it. Still looks like we have some downside pressure. URNJ also 
There's downside pressure here, not huge green candlesticks yet. We could still see some downside, it is possible. Copper um, futures pricing up a little bit today. Momentum still downward though. We haven't broken any large downtrends or anything. Well, I mean, we could ride, you could ride through here. That's only two points, not a real strong downtrend line. So we'll see where this trades tomorrow. I don't really, the momentum's to the downside. We got COPX, which has broken its downtrend line. And it's just hanging out. That actually looks a little bit strong uh, in the short term. Uh, but we'll see if it can muster anything to the upside. If we get pressure in copper, that very well could head lower. And it does kind of look like a shoulder head shoulder in the short term. Um, but again, guys, the shoulder head shoulder stuff, I don't, that's usually a, a, an end of trend pattern. And we'll see if we do break that neckline uh, down there. Uh, iron ore working its way on up. Well, flat today though, but working its way on up the past week or so. Uh, but looking pretty good. Putting in the double bottom there. We've got aluminum down just a hair. Um, but, you know, everyone's looking at probably these head, shoulder, head, shoulder things going on. Uh, we'll see if we get follow through on them uh, and if we get a slowdown in the market. Uh, and that could also be the lead-in pattern uh, before a big move to the upside as well, which I do see quite a bit of, and it looks exactly like that. We've got nickel up 1%, looking like it's trying to turn things around. Uh, there's still a lot of downside momentum here to work off. We've got move down 1%, and that's right at this support level. We'll see if it holds. That is a retest uh, of this. Now, keep in mind, a lot of these are sensitive to interest rates, and on the long end of the curve, interest rates shot up quite a bit. So it's trying to digest all that. So MU and copper and aluminum, iron ore, it's trying to digest these big moves in yields. Emerging uh, markets doing the same thing. I mean, it's up today, but I mean, we just got slapped in the face with a big move in the 10-year and 30-year. 30, 30 KRE holding on. Still, it's just moving sideways. We've got TAN down 2.5%, doesn't like the yields. We could see, I mean, if yields break out to the upside, guys, these things aren't going to look too hot. Lithium moving sideways, momentum's to the downside. I wouldn't touch this at this point. I would wait. We've got too much downside momentum generated here. REMX up 1%, but again, just a lot of downside momentum generated. Um, there's your bullish engulfing. It's going to try to turn it here, but we'll see if it does it. A lot of downside momentum. Baltic Dry Index looking pretty good. Higher lows. Uh, that still looks like it wants to rip. We've got XHB. Yeah, this is going to be a tough one here. Um, break into the downside. Looks like we could see further downside pressure. And if yields move up, I would expect that. Um, home sales have definitely slowed down due to affordability and mortgage rates, and this is not helping with interest rates rocketing to the upside. So more downside is looking likely. Russell 2000, get a pretty big bearish engulfing that generally ends lower, and we'll see if we get the follow through in that. In the short term, we've got SPX in this rising uh, wedge formation with a bearish engulfing here and here. That doesn't look that inviting to me. Uh, it looks like we want to go lower here. Uh, and we'll see if that manifests itself like that. And then the NASDAQ, it's up today. We do have two bearish engulfings right here, and we'll see what direction this goes. Um, but with the bearish engulfings, sometimes these like to roll over. So get, get prepared for a potential rollover if it does occur. SMCI is down, but it bounced off support. So you can see the wick on the bottom there and that bounce. Uh, NVIDIA is up a little bit. But this still looks pretty pathetic here um, for a move lower. Here I can, if you draw it like this, there you go. Downward move potentially. We'll see if that occurs. We've got Bitcoin up 2%. Again, the momentum here is to the downside. We do have an up, upward move. Uh, short term, though, sometimes when you get mixed up like this, we are in, in, in a pattern. You just have to wait for more data, more trading days to get in here. And then Ethereum, 
Uh, it's up today. It's broken a downtrend line here. It's, looks like it's trying to work its way on up in the short term. <clears throat> so that's what I've got for today, guys. Give me a thumb up for the content. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, subscribe to the website if you're interested. May Days with that coupon code. Uh, and that's all I've got for today. So we'll catch you next time. This is Finding Value.